Hi there, Joy here. Uh, thanks for coming once more to my fly by the seat of your pants crafting area, which basically is my dining room. Um, today we are winging it as per usual, and um, I have I have a wee tiny plan in my head. I have like an inkling of an idea. It's not really a plan, but I have an idea, and it, it's kind of a necessity that we're doing it this way because what I have left for clay, I've been on a claying frenzy. I'll show you what I have left for clay. Um, I have a whole bunch of translucent, yay. I have black. I just went and I stocked up on my, my necessities and my necessities are translucent and black and white. And when I say I have a whole bunch of translucent, I also have this great big chunk here. So I am loaded down with translucent. I love translucent because I love making candle sconces and I love having the light shine through. So I have those. I quite literally have this much of the blue. This is a nice teal blue, which I quite enjoy. And I have tiny little bits and pieces left of other, th other things. So I'm thinking that at one point what I'm going to do probably is I'm going to blend all of these little bits and pieces because the bits and pieces are blues because that's what I've been working with is a bunch of blues. So I'm going to probably blend some of these blues together to see what I get. And since I'm doing that anyways, I have this chunk of waste clay. And it's, it's from this. It's from the cane that I made that was for the beads. Um, if you've watched the video with the layer translucent beads. This is the cane that I was making for that. And so this is the colors that are in here. So I'm going to probably blend all of these blues together. So if I put all of these and blend them all, I should get some nice kind of medium tone blue color. Um, although I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to blend it and see where it comes to. And then I might decide to add these guys. I might decide to put these two together. Who knows? The only other color I have left, besides tiny little bits and pieces, like we're talking tiny little bits and pieces, is I have this god-awful green. And I keep calling it the god-awful green because it's just ugly. It's ugly. It's, it's called string bean. Um, I got it because I was doing a Christmas project and I needed a green color for trees and leaves. And it worked for that. It is the perfect Christmas green. Really it is. It's just I don't like the color myself. So I have that along with all my blues. And again, this little tiny piece of red. But I also have this. I have some pre-made little canes that I was using also for the beaded project. And it's uh, like a... It was a red, deep red pearl. But it's blended with translucent already and made into... I have some bits of cane end left. They're basically just spirals. It was too warm, so it's smeared, so you can't see the pattern very well. My house is quite humid right now. It's, it's just that weather outside, so I've been putting a lot of canes in the fridge to deal with all the fact that everything is smearing. And Anyways, so I have also waste clay that um, from the cane ends and things that I was doing with that. So... I can make a reddish color with this. It's it's already a reddish color. It's going to get a wee bit lighter just because there's a little bit more translucent blended in. And it kind of takes on when it, you, it was a very dark, bright red. I don't have anything dark. It was darker than this um, by a little bit and it had some shine to it. When I started, oh, is that pure? That's pure. There we go. That's pure. Um, and now it's, it's kind of what I would call a almost heading towards a corally red. It's just got that little change in it from the translucent. So I have that. So just to recap, we have white, translucent, black. We're going to have some form of blue. We may have two forms of blue. And we have the red and we have the green. Doesn't sound like much. But what I wanted to make is I wanted to make um, something along the lines of a what you call it? Like a there's black and white canes out there that look like uh, henna patterns, and they're all black and white. 
and I love them because they look like henna patterns because I do henna myself and the patterns are fairly distinctive once you get going. Um, excuse me for snuffling. Stupid allergies. And so, but the problem with that is the henna patterns usually end up um, round, basically, because a lot of the patterns are stylized flowers and things like that. I have a plate that I'd like to cover, which is awesome. So at some point I will be doing a straight black, white, and translucent, probably, cane based on uh, henna. However, um, I also have some small roundish sconces like the one I showed you in my, my layered cane tutorial. Um, and I have a little square dish thing like so. And so I don't want to have only a cane that comes out into rounds. Even for the, the plate, I don't want to have only a cane that comes out to rounds. Because once you get the center round on your plate, you have to go around that. I may end up making something that's shaped kind of like so. Um, if you could see that. Because to go around the round section in the center, I want it to have a gradual circle. And I'm thinking if I do something that's... It's not straight up and down, obviously, because you have to get around the corner. So if you angle the sides in a little bit so the bottom is smaller and the top is larger, I'm assuming it will go around the circle nicer and require less stretching. I have done it with square. But you have to, basically, you have to... The bottoms will meet and the tops will have gap, little, little triangular gaps in between them. And then you have to distort your pattern until you can get those, those edges to meet up. So you're stretching the top of the pattern while the bottom of the pattern stays the same. And it's doable. It's a lot of work and it's not as, as crisp looking. So I thought this time I would try to be a little bit more um, practical about the whole thing and make my cane shape so that it will work better for me. So at some point, um, I decided that I would like to do this in two different projects. I would like to do the black and white one by itself and I'll do that when I run out of all the other colors. <laughs> Because I still have lots of black and white, but I still have, I hate like not playing with my colors. So I'm going to use these up first. And in my head, my itty bitty inkling of a plan is that I would like to have um, a couple blends. I want to do a three color blend. And that might be where these come in. I might put this and this with some white in the middle to make a, a bullseye or something that I can distort. So that's why I may not put that in that blend. I could do it with, you know, I could blend these two and then um, put the white or translucent or whatever in the center and then put this one on the other end. If I want to make a, a larger, depending on what I want to use in the pattern. I kind of have in my head, I have pictured that I want to make a teardrop shaped, I want to make a bullseye, and then I want to turn that into a teardrop shaped um, little cane. And then what I want to do is I want to bend. Oh, I don't have a piece of paper. I have a piece of paper. I'll try and show you what I'm trying to do. In my head, I'd like to try and find out how to do something like this. If you could see that. The light's not great in here. I have like four different lamps. I have every light in the house basically on because otherwise you can't see me. It's so dark in my house. Basically, it's like a petal shape with two petal shapes beside it, except the outside petal shapes are bending slightly. And I'm not sure how to accomplish that to get it to stay. I'm obviously going to have to put something in here, so little triangles of clay in there to hold that shape. And then I have to put something here. Now I might, maybe if I put circles here, then the circles themselves will help hold this shape. Maybe the circle will distort and allow me to keep this shape. Or maybe I need to make five petals instead of three. And that brings me almost down to a flat. And that would give me like a half circle altogether. Somewhere in my head I decided I'd like to see if I could figure out how to do that. So this, um, if I make that into a whatever combination I use, into a three-part Skinner blend, and make my bullseye and then shape my bullseye into these three 
teardrop shapes to make that. I think that'll be cool. And I'd also like to, maybe I'll put these on the sides. I don't know, because they're already round. Perhaps if I put these on the sides, it will help hold that in place. But I kind of like having bullseyes in the center of something. So I might use them for corners. They come out really cool. So anyways, like I said, uh, an inkling of a smidge of a plan that I've somehow managed to babble for 10 minutes about. So what I'm going to do to save us time later is I am going to put all this, I'm going to condition all this stuff, I'm going to blend all this stuff, and I'm going to make some, um, some sheets with my pasta machine. And while I'm doing that, and I also have to condition a whole bunch of translucent and white and black, and it takes a lot of time. So basically I will do that off camera, and then I will turn on the other camera that's above so you can see the actual work that I'm doing. Um, but before this, I have to go for lunch with my mommy, because I haven't seen her for a little while. So um, I may come back looking a little frazzled and stressed because she drives me nuts. <laughs> but, but she's my mom, so I love her. And I, I'm going to go spend some time with her. And, uh, and hopefully I'll come back with a real crazy bent for creativity because that's where I got it from. I got it from her. Um, so I will see you in a bit with conditioned clay and a slightly maybe better plan on what I'm doing. Maybe not. But if you, usually if you come back to my page, you realize by now that everything's fly by the seat of your pants because I can't follow a plan if I try. And there's no, where's the fun in that, right? Where's the fun in that? So, um, so yeah. So I'll be back later. Talk to you then. Hi there, I'm back. So I survived lunch with the grandma, which is good. Um, actually, it was a nice visit. So I'm in a good mood and I am prepared now to do my little cane experiment. And what I ended up doing, if you recall, I had two different colors of blue. And I decided I wanted a bigger chunk of blue, so I blended the two blues together. And it came out almost exactly the same color as the teal pearl, which was the other blob of blue that I had. And so I decided, well, if they're almost the same color, I might as well put them all together and have a nice large piece of blue. So that's what this is. That is all these blues, um, sorry, the blend of blues that were left over from the cane like this when blended together plus the teal blue and the lighter turquoise blue basically all blended together into this it's not a bad color at all I like it I have my red that had been blended with translucent I've put them all through the pasta machine to get them all nice and flat obviously I have black now I also, just for curiosity's sake, took my big pile of scrap and I put it through to see what kind of color I could get. It's not a bad color, but it's it's really just kind of a gray, so I'm not going to bother using it. If it had come out pretty, I might have thought about using it. But while I was doing this, I discovered that there was a whole bunch of bits and pieces of clay hiding in my pasta machine. So I took some time and I, I didn't take it apart because I'm not that patient, but I took some time and scraped all in around there. And just to make good and sure that I wasn't before I did the whites and stuff, um, going to get all these weird colored streaks in there. And then I put through a piece of scrap white that I had a little bit of red and stuff in it anyway, so I figured it was safe. And I put that through just to double check because we all know if you've ever done white clay or translucent clay, if there's anything ever hiding in here, Murphy's Law number 306 says it will only come out when you try to put through a nice pure white piece of clay or a nice pure translucent piece of clay. So I did the test on a little piece and it came out fairly good. So I've put through my translucent, quite a lot of it, and I've put through my white. And obviously I, I said I had the black. What I did with this god awful green I keep talking about is I decided that I would add a bit of translucent to it. So I did that, and it's a slightly lighter green, kind of more like a spring green now than it was when it started, and I like it a little bit better. So I've kind of in my head decided that I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the, that aside for a second here. I want to do a three-part Skinner blend, and I also want to do a two-part Skinner blend. Now, as I said, I do have these, which you it's kind of hard to show you that it's just a nice little spiral cane. I don't know if I mentioned that it's been really hot lately. It's been very humid. 
and so everything seems to be smearing really easily. So every time I go to cut it, I get a smear half the time. But I do have these two pieces of leftover. I'm going to make them the same size, more or less, I think, so that I can use them for something. And so I don't mind using the red in a blend because I know I'm going to have some pure red and white. Actually, red and translucent, I think it is, with these guys when the time comes. Let's see, it's done it again. I was lucky once, and then I can't. Lucky once and never again. Anyways, you get the idea that I have these little canes sitting here that I can stick in a corner somewhere. And the cane ends actually are what ended up getting blended for this. So I want to do my three part Skinner blend. I keep getting off topic. And I've decided I want to do it with the green, the blue, and some white in the middle, or some translucent in the middle. And I think I like the idea of the white because I'm pretty sure I have translucent in both of these. And so there will be one part that doesn't, well, maybe, maybe I want translucent. Yeah, maybe. All right, I've talked myself out of it. I've decided that I want translucent all the way across the board. I don't want to have one section that the light doesn't shine through. So I'm going to cut this and save some for later. And I'm going to make my three-part blend by just kind of doing this. This should give me one little section in the middle that's pure. And I'm just going to bump it up by putting those back there. Oh, I did get a little tiny piece. See? All the stuff I did to clean that out, there's one tiny piece that came out of my translucent. How dare it. Anyhow. So, I'm going to trim this up. That one's fairly straight. This one is not. I need it to be about the same size. That means there-ish. Double check. Yep. And then, I need it to be about the same angle. I don't want a huge piece, so I'm not using all the green. I'm just going to go like so. I'll put those up against each other. Now this is a little thicker, obviously, in the middle than the green is. I'm okay with that. always end up kind of using up almost all of my pure in the middle color. And I kind of like having pure in the middle color. <sighs> this one's all right. In order to get it the same width, we're going to go this way. Mark that there, mark that there. Right, right. There's obviously an easier way to do this, but being lazy, I don't usually use it. All right. So I'm bump that up against there. Give it a roll to make sure it's all glued. Oops. Roll the proper direction so you don't end up with a line in it. Like so. I still have a little bit of blue left, a little bit of green left. So. I can always decide to wrap it in one or the other color. So that's going to be one blend. Now I'm not going to blend these on the camera because my camera is sitting on the same table as this. I don't know if you can see this table leg. No, camera leg here. And this jiggles a lot. So if I'm putting things through the pasta machine with the camera on, the whole screen's probably going to be kind of nasty. So I'm not going to do that until after. I'll turn the camera off and do it off camera. I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can do my second one. There we go. Now, I did say I wanted to use some white for the other one. So I'm going to put my translucent aside, I'm going to put my extra green and blue aside, and I'm going to get out my white. And the only color left, as you can see, 
is the red. And so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to cut this so that it's squarish. And this is the last of my red, so I probably will just toss these extra pieces on top once it's cut, just because I might as well use it up. There's no point in having a little tiny smidge of red left. It won't do me any good. And I'm going to I'll clean up this end and match it up. I need a bigger piece of glass is what I need. I need a bigger piece of glass. angle when I mark that. We shall double check. Oh, green. Just what I wanted. Oh, that's not too bad. Alright. So we're going to do this. And because it's a two-part one, it's a little easier to get my angles all done. So what I'm basically going to do is put one on top of the other. See if they're the same size. More or less. Yep. So we're going to go corner to corner. Um, you can stack these and cut them stacked so that they're exactly the same shape. But every time I do that with red and white, I end up getting a whole bunch of red in my white because the red seems to transfer a lot of color. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to try and be smart and I'm going to just do it separately so that I don't get that blend except for where I want the blend. And I just realized something. I would like to have some pure white. All right. I'm not going to get pure white like that, am I? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it together like so. My red, if you're wondering why I'm doing one piece of white to two pieces of red, it's because the red is actually quite a bit thinner because it was a scrap and that means I didn't have enough to make a nice thick chunk big enough to do this. And so basically what I did is I just put it on a thinner setting. So it's about half as thick as the white and I don't need as much of it of the white to do this blend. So this is this is not <laughs> this is not the professional way to do this. I'm kind of winging it with this like I do everything else just because I like to use up as I said my red. And when I decided that I wanted to have some pure white on this, that means I now have to take this piece back. I still have some leftover white for later, but I want to take this piece back put it up against here and cut. Because when you're doing your Skinner blend, if you want to have a pure color on either end, this is what you have to do. You have to have a section that's not in the angled portion. Because wherever the angled portion is, wherever the two colors meet, those blend. Obviously if it's here, it's not blending a lot of red into your white, right? Because you're getting that much white. Sorry that much white and that much red, but it's not going to be pure white anywhere. And I would like to have some pure white. I wasn't thinking that through at the time. So this is what I'm doing how to fix that. Normally, if you have the pieces and you're not matching them up and you want to have some pure color, all you really have to do is cut your angled part part way down. Don't start it right at the end and go corner to corner. If that makes any sense. I don't know if my explanation is making any sense. I'm finding little bits and pieces of color here and there. It's making me crazy. All right, so this is going to be blend number two. So it's going to be a red and white blend to here and then pure white on one end. I'm going to turn off the camera at this point and I'm going to put these through the pasta machine to get my blends and then I will be back. All right, <clears throat> so have you ever done something really stupid for no good reason at all? Yeah, I just did that. I was busy thinking I should make sure to get my green, white, and blue into the pasta machine before the red so they didn't get red smeared on it, and I put it in the wrong direction. 
And I now have this absolutely lovely piece of green blue. So anyways, it also reminded me, my little boo-boo, why I don't like three-part Skinner blends. It's really hard to get it the right size to fit in the pasta machine and to keep it that size. So anyways, luckily I had some scraps left over. I remade another one. So here is my three-part Skinner blend of the green, the white, and the blue. And here is my regular Skinner blend of the red and the white. So I now have green blue to play with, apparently. Yay. Anyhow, um, normally though, as I said, I don't like doing a three-part Skinner blend. So um, normally when I do something like this, I will make two of these. So I would make the blue and the white, and then it would make the green and the white. And then I would put the ends together. You end up with a longer piece, obviously, unless you're making small ones. But um, I just find it's easier to get it to fit the width of my pasta machine. It's not all that wide. It's like six inches wide. So where was I going with this? I so distracted myself, I forgot what I was planning to do. All right. I don't know if I actually had a plan past this. I know I decided I wanted to put these colors in, but I don't know if I actually had a plan. So, normally, when I get to this point, I decide if I want to make a bullseye with it or if I want to make a fan fold with it. And I'm probably going to do one of them a bullseye and one of them a fan fold. And since I already have a circular red and white thing, I will probably make a circular green thing. And I only have this much blue left. And being the person that hates waste, what I normally do at this point is if I'm going to roll it up anyways, I give myself a nice firm center by doing this. And I'm going to trim this fella so that it's straight across. See, I hate this waste. I know there's going to be waste there when I do this, but there's not much I can do about it. So I just have to deal with it. I'm going to trim this fella. I probably could take all these chunks and just blend it into my green, seeing as how I have this stupid green color that I had no intention of having. At least it's prettier than the original green was. So, now that I've done complaining about what I screwed up, I will put this here and make sure it's the right length. And then I will just roll towards the green, like so. And that will give me a nice bullseye cane. We can start doing stuff with our bullseye cane. So, there we go. Now it's not green all the way around, and I kind of would like it to be. So I'm gonna stretch a little bit. I just want to make sure I get the green over to here, if you can see that, where it's no longer showing the pure white. Not really for any reason, it's just aesthetically pleasing, I think, not to have that white stripe in there. Still not quite there. See if that does it. All right. I think by the time I roll and blend a little bit, that will be good. So as you can see, we have blue, we have some white. It's almost a full circle. It's not quite, which is a shame. But that will give us a nice bullseye cane to work with, like so. I'm going to take a quick picture of that because there is a challenge on right now. If you uh, are on, hooked on polymer clay, the challenge has to do with a three-part Skinner blend, which is why I decided I would try the three-part Skinner blend in the first place because I knew there was a challenge and I figured that that would let me in on it because I usually miss them. I'm not usually clang when they come up or I just don't have the right stuff for it at the time. The last one was mica shift and I didn't have any pearlized ones to work with. So at this point we want to do something with this. And um, I think I'm going to make it into a teardrop shape because I did say I wanted to try and do something that had the three teardrops 
like so. And so this is a good enough one to try it with. Let's try it. However, as per usual, it's getting a little warm, so maybe I'll let it rest for a few minutes before I change it, and I'll do something with my red. I'll set these aside too, because those are part of this whole setup. So since I did that one as a roll, I will do this one as a fan fold. Like so, I've got a little bit of red spread still up there. So I'm gonna start with my white. I'm gonna make it a fairly skinny fan fold. Because I did something the other day that I quite liked how it turned out. And I think I'm going to try it again. We're getting a very nice gradual darkening of our clay, like so. It's getting a little skinnier on this end, because I forgot to trim it first, but that's okay, because I can trim it after. I can trim it after. Like so. like so. I'm just going to make this one kind of make it fit so I don't have to waste that last bit of clay. So here's kind of what it looks like. Like so. And the problem I have with fan folds is that they always end up being quite skinny. So I've been trying to figure out lately what to do with them to make them a little bit deeper. And so what I'm going to do with this one, I think, is I'm going to cut it in half, or half-ish, like so. And I'm going to put something in the center, and that gives me a longer, wider piece to work with. So what am I going to put in the center? And that's the beauty of the whole thing. I think what I want to do is I want to put some black. I'm going to put black. Why? I don't know. I just like the idea. So here's the right length for it. There we go. I'm going to clean that edge up. There we go. And I'm putting it on the flatter side. When I pushed down to cut it, it gave me a flatter side, as you can see. And so I'm going to put the black on the flatter side just because it's a little easier. Push it down to make sure it's stuck. And I'm going to trim it. It was definitely stuck, so it worked. That wasn't quite the right length, though. There we go. All right, so this is what we have on that side. We're going to do the same on this side. Let me square that up a little bit first. Get rid of the other black. Squish it down a bit so it's stuck. All right. So now we have this, right? Which would be kind of boring by itself, so we want to put something in the middle of that. And here I am working with my glasses on my head instead of on my face. That makes perfect sense. So what I'm going to do here, I have made up my mind in the, in the interim, is I'm going to put a groove in the middle, like so. I'm going to line it up with the other one. I should have done it both at the same time, but my this thing kind of tapers. It tapers from round, it's a chopstick, to square. And I like it because it gives me the two options of shapes, but if you kind of catch it in the middle, you're getting the taper. So you kind of have to do it in the center. Hopefully this widens out about the same amount that it did on both sides. 
So here's what we have. We're going to put something down the middle. Specifically, we're going to put this. I've got red and white going on here anyways, right? Might as well make this whole thing red and white. What do you think? Should I do that? Like so? That one's a little big. This one being shorter by the time I roll him out to the right length, perhaps he'll be the right size. Could make the hole bigger, but it's just as easy to do that. Now I can do this, or I can do this, and make it quite funky. This groove isn't as deep as the other side, so I'm just going to play with this until I get the grooves all about the same. Like so. And I do like my symmetry. So I will probably do it with the colors matching. But I also feel like I should have something else in there just for fun. So before I do that, I think I'm going to use up my bit of green. I'm sorry for doing this, it's probably jiggling. it's not jiggling too much. Black. Always black everywhere. So the idea I had here was this. I'm going to have to trim it, obviously. Just wanted to see how it would look if I did that. What do we think? What do we think? I think it's interesting. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I like it. So I'm just going to trim those off as best I can. I love having little bits of scraps that I can use up. I just don't like the waste, as I've said a few times. So if I can use up the scrap colors, I will. And as I've mentioned in other videos, sometimes that little weird thing that you do just because turns out to have a lot of interest in the actual finished product that you might not have had if you hadn't been trying to use up your scrap. So I see that as a positive. Oh, I've got bits of green and black everywhere. Uh, all right. So where was I? We were here. So this line everything up nicely so I get that in the center is where we stand and that one I'm trying to squish it together but the greens not all the way into the center there that's better this is where we stand so I'm just going to take a second and make this thing square it wasn't quite square because I hadn't really finished flattening out any of the sides I'm just going to trim that little bit because the green wasn't quite flush. There is my hairs. It wasn't quite flush, so it's rolled over onto my black. And I'd like to try and keep my black line there. So I'm just going to trim this. One thing you, I mean, you may not like fly by the seat of your pants, caning as much as caning with a plan. But if nothing else, doing it like this once in a while at least gives you the knowledge that you can fix things or change things or if it doesn't turn out perfect the first time, it doesn't really make that huge of a difference because you can make it work. You can always kind of just rearrange things and make it different. It might not be what you pictured and it might not be perfect, but it's not the end of the world if something happens that you didn't quite expect to happen. Did I just put black in there? I probably did. I don't know why. I shouldn't be so anal about trying to keep all this stuff separate, but as you see, every little bit of clay seems to come in handy, so if I can separate out the colors, it makes my life easier. So that's a bit better. There might be a little bit on this side that's done the same thing. 
Obviously it wasn't quite trimmed level and it's folded itself over. There, that's better. That's better. So where was I? I was turning this into a square. Now this of course will reduce it a bit while I'm at it. And so that gives us something that's kind of interesting. Right? Right. Now, what else do I want to do with it? I have this other guy. I do, I do. I could make him smaller. If I make him twice the length of this, I can use him in something. I can even probably add to this pattern by indenting somewhere else in the side or the top and putting more. That might work. That might be fun. I always hate having to cut the ends because it's, like I said, so soft that it just kind of smushes everything, like so. It doesn't leave it very nice, really. Does that give me more or less? More or less. So, where do I want to do it? What do I want to do with it? What do I want to do with it? I still have this little bit of green. I could add to this part of it. I could add something that might be interesting. If I make something there, put these up against, all right, I think what I want to do, if I want to get it the right length, and I want to trim it so that it's straight, like so. And if I put it here somewhere, what does it do? Does it do anything? Is it interesting to have that T-shape there? If I put a circle on top of it, maybe? Nope, don't like it. All right, so I think at this point what I want to do is I want to change the shape of this. And I think that I want to make it a triangle. So do I want the white to be the longest? I think I do. Where did I put my little, I just want to wipe my fingers off before I start playing with the white. I think I want to, yes. I think I want to pinch this so that the white becomes the top of the triangle. I kind of like that idea. I do like the idea when I have something round and something triangular, I like the idea of being able to wrap the triangle around the round thing. And you can do it a couple different ways, but I just, I like the way it works. So you can take the triangle, you can actually squeeze it quite thin on top and roll it around the round thing, or you can put it this way, put the round thing on the bottom and wrap the triangles that way, and then create another big triangle out of it. So you end up with a triangle with a circle in the center, and that usually gets kind of interesting. It's just one of those shapes that kind of lends itself to doing things. So this is what we're getting. Now, I did have a beep for my camera a while ago. So my battery may be dying. The other battery is hooked up to the charger. So I might turn this off and do this in a way that I can speed it up. If it happens to turn off in a strange area, it's probably just because the battery has died and I will charge up the battery and come back. So you may see a little blip or something in the finished video if that does happen. 
but this is boring and you don't want to watch this. So I will pause it and restart it.